Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Tiffany Walden, co-founder and editor-in-chief of The Tribe. I wrote the, the cover story on Jamila Woods. Let's give her a hand. So Jamila, how are you feeling tonight? We're almost at the time for Legacy Legacy. I'm feeling really good. Thank you all for coming. I'm really happy. <laughs> So I had the honor and the privilege of speaking with Jamila Woods for the cover story, and we had a really awesome conversation. A lot of stuff did not make it into the story, so we're kind of going to rehash that a little bit tonight so y'all can get to know her process for making Legacy Legacy. So let's jump right into it. Um, you know, what was the writing process like for you for Legacy Legacy, and how did it differ from uh, Heaven? Well, I think it was pretty... Uh, it was kind of a situation where I was just trying to write new music after Heaven and being on tour a lot. And so I wasn't necessarily gonna, I actually was like really stressed out by the prospect of writing a second album. So I was just trying to write songs in general. And so the first song I wrote was just um, giving myself the prompt of trying to cover Nikki Giovanni's poem, Ego Trippin' as a song, um, which is something that at YCA where I work um, teaching poetry, it was actually um, my best friend Fatih had done a prompt one time that was like doing a cover poem of someone else's poem. And so basically I did that as a song. And then I did a similar thing with Muddy where I wrote a song inspired by a poem about Muddy Waters. And then I was like, oh, I got two songs named after people. Why don't I just try to do that more? <laughs> and um, actually I thought, okay, like maybe I'll do an EP. Like I'll do an EP and it's gonna be called songs about people, and Denez was like <laughs> hyping me up. Denez was like, that's great. And I told the label, they were like, like no, like, think about that more. Um, and so I was just really trying to do something that was very low stakes, and I think that's like, that's a lot of like the pedagogy of how I teach, how, you know, at Young Chicago Authors we teach poetry too. It's like something that's low stakes that doesn't make you overthink writing. And so I think that's what I was trying to do. And at some point I realized that I just got really excited about the process and I realized that I was just putting too much pressure on myself to make a follow-up album and it could just be an album and I didn't have to like make it be this great great thing I could just focus on writing the songs in in the most authentic way that I could um, and a lot of it was also because uh, slot A had sent me like a folder of beats or sent Sherrod a folder of beats and somehow I got it and I was like, oh, <laughs> I was just writing to all of these things. I was like, oh, I gotta meet this person. Like, and so I, when I met him and we started just working a lot, that also was a part of it too and like building my confidence in the project and having a process where it wasn't just me getting a beat but like us talking about like, okay, who is this person? Who is Sun Ra? Let's spend a whole day like talking about him and thinking about him and you know, make the sonic space of the sound song around that, um, around that person. Wow. So that was a long answer. I had <laughs> two Fridas. <laughs> okay. No, it's good you can answer as long as you want to. Um, so each song on Legacy, Legacy is named after a super dope black or brown uh, trailblazer. Like we got Zora Neale Hurston on the album, we got Frida Kahlo, we got uh, Basquiat on there. So, how did you find a way to represent the essence of all of these muses? Well, I really like um, this quote. I don't know who said it, but it's like, you don't always have to enter a poem through the front door. So it's like this idea, like you don't, like I could write a million poems about my grandma and they would all be different because there's so many different things about her that I love and that I know. And so I was trying to think of how can I enter writing a song about, you know, named after a person from so many different angles, not just the same angle. So like one might be a cover of one of their pieces. One might be like uh, a response to something that they've written, like with Baldwin. It's kind of like me grappling with reading a letter to my nephew and being like, oh, oh yeah, like really? Like you want us to accept white people with love, like, oh, okay, cool. Um, like, that's, that's, really <laughs> that's heavy, that's heavy, let's, let's talk about this. Um, and one might be, like, seeing a picture of Frida Kahlo's house that she lived in with Diego, with the bridge, you know, connecting two houses. So different ways to enter the same sort of, like, concept, but coming at it from different angles. Now, we have to talk about friends, because you have a lot of friends and family here in the room. Let's clap it up for everybody who's here supporting Jamila. 
My best friend is in the room, Morgan Elise Johnson. I started the tribe with her. Let's clap it up for her as well. <laughs> Um, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, what it's like to build uh, an artistic legacy with your friends. I mean, your best friend, like, helped put together the art, the kit uh, video. So um, talk a little bit about what that means to you. Yeah, um, Fati, Give it up for Fati. Um, yeah, she directed the Eartha video, and it was really cool because I think usually with my videos, I'm... I like to just, I like to be involved, really involved in the process and like think of the concept and think of like what I would imagine myself doing. And what she could see me doing was way beyond what I could see myself doing. So it was almost like, similarly to how Eartha Kit in the video is like, no, we're not gonna compromise in love and relationships. We're gonna have what we deserve. And it's always in my friendship with Fatih, I feel like she can see for me beyond what I can see for myself. So that was like a really perfect um, situation for that, that video. And I think in general, for this album, Dark Noise Collective, my poetry collective, and my like mentees and peers at YCA were like some of the first people who heard the album and gave me feedback on it. And that's so valuable to me. Like I, I think if I didn't have, because I, I grew up going to open mics and stuff, and that's part of an editing process as a poet to me, was like going to open mic, seeing ooh, no one snapped or mmmed at all. Like, I might have to go back <laughs> and rewrite this. Um, so, like, having that sort of listening process is, like, part of my editing process. So I had, like, a listening session um, that really helped me find the order of the album, and it wouldn't have been the same flow. And that's something I'm really, actually, really proud of the order, and that came together from, from the listening session. So. Yeah, because each song kind of, like, mirrors each other. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um... Such a good memory. I don't yes. remember. I said that. <laughs> um, yeah, it was kind of like we would talk about the songs kind of having like partners. Like um, me and Slot A talked about that, and some in the listening session too. It's like um, feeling like you're flowing from one idea to the next in this way that's really cohesive. Um, and even I realized this today talking to someone is that like YCA has this curriculum model where you go from talking about your individual self, the I, to talking about the community, the we, to talking about the other, um, to talking about like, okay, now that I understand all of those groups, what do I have to say about the world? And to me, me and Slot A talked about that like structure a lot and how we could make songs that were talking about the self, talking about like, you know, interpersonal interactions, like with a partner or whatever and then with broader society. And so I think like this, the album kind of goes from like I outward um, in terms of flow, which I think is cool. You can tell that because once you get to Baldwin, it seems like a <laughs> triumph, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so can you talk a little bit about like what you've learned about yourself just from working through Legacy Legacy and, and tapping into the spirits and the essence of each one of the artists that is represented on the album? Um, I think I learned that um, I'm just learning a lot about my voice because I feel like I'm very confident in myself as a writer, but I always still feel like I somehow tricked everyone into thinking that I can yes, sing. Yes, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I still, like, even this past few weeks, like, am, like, noticing, like, singing a song like Betty where it's, like, or a song like Muddy where it's, like, very uh, belty or, like, yelly type tone it's like forcing me to be like, oh, no, you wrote this shit. Like, you have to actually <laughs> sing it now. So it's kind of like a good confidence booster. Or like, I feel like I'm on a journey towards, like, by the end of tour, I feel like I'll be, I have learned so much more about my voice and what I can do. So I'm glad that this album has set out that challenge for me. I feel that same way. I wrote the story, and now I'm like, oh, you I have wrote to the like, shit out of that story, though. <laughs> Thank that you. was so good. Like, I have to ask questions, <laughs> like... <laughs> Um, who are some of your muses here in Chicago? We talk about some of the larger, you know, outside of Chicago artists, other than Muddy. I mean, Muddy's from here. Yeah. Um, and Sun Ra, too. But who are some of your muses here right now? A lot of my muses are here. Krista Franklin is a big muse of mine. And you might not recognize her today because she's rocking a whole new look. But yeah, her collage work and her poetry and just her 
I feel like she's a mentor auntie to like so many artists in Chicago and it's so valuable. Uh, my mom is one of my muses. <laughs> um, and she's a healer and yeah, I just, I feel like so much of like the impetus for why I create in the first place comes from growing up with her being a creative person and a healer at the same time and seeing those things as very linked. Um, and Avery R. Young is also here. <laughs> he told me that you did a haiku when he first met you at 14, 15 <laughs> years old. Like, like. <laughs> Yeah, I did a haiku and I still remember the haiku, but he, he in, the, in the circle of kids, he was like, you never stop writing. <laughs> and then basically, <laughs> And from then on, he was just in my life, just encouraging me. And he's an amazing poet and singer. And also showed me that you don't have to choose between. Because some people would try to tell me that I had to like, kind of focus on one thing, or else you'd never be that good at anything. But to have these examples in my life of artists who do more than one thing, really useful to me. Since we're on that, how do you switch back and forth? How do you go from being a poet to being a music artist? I'm still figuring that out, to be honest. I, I don't know. My poetry, I feel like I have to just, I, for me, it's like recognizing that poetry is not just the moment when I'm sitting down and writing the poem, because I have some people who are like, oh, I, I wake up every day and I write every day. The day I stop doing that, I will no longer be a poet. That's like not how I think about it. It's kind of like recognizing that my poetry is part of the reason why, like Giovanni wouldn't be the, the writing wouldn't be the way it is if I wasn't a poet. So kind of not seeing them as two separate worlds, but rather like how they intersect. And um, I'm still working on discipline. I think I, I should be writing more poems. So hopefully on the tour bus, I'll be, I'll be writing poems too. Now you end Legacy Legacy with a house track. Talk a little bit about that. And it's called Betty, the remix for Betty. Yeah, Betty for Boogie. Oh, yeah. And that's another artist from Chicago who really inspires me or is important to me is Boogie McLaren. And so I thought it was a cool. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know, you might think it's for Boogie, like for dancing. I thought that would be funny. But um, the, the house remix, I really like, you know, give the credit to Slot A for making that remix happen. But I wanted it there, especially because. For me, Boogie is such a, an amazing example of someone who is like, like they say when like a, like when, I forget the quote, but like she has so much knowledge and about like house music, culture, history in Chicago. And every time I'm in a dance wor workshop with her, it's like you're not just dancing, you're learning about like what it costs someone to move their body that way. Like the, the people who invented that, movement and what it what the weight of it is um and so i think that like seeing the way she taught was like oh like that's everything that even this whole album it's like teaching learning education doesn't just have to happen in these sterile environments you know it can happen on a dance floor it can happen listening to an album it can happen wherever you choose and there's this idea that oh like privileged people have this education that comes from this type of environment, but that's just really not true. Um, and so I think, yeah, that's why it was important to me to shout her out on the album. Yeah. Yes, let's clap it up, let's clap it up. We talk about everybody else's legacy, now we have to talk about yours. Yeah. <laughs> what is your legacy? What do you want people to see your legacy as in Chicago and beyond? I think I told you this when you asked me this yeah. the first time. I was like, I, I probably should have anticipated that people would ask me that when I named the album Legacy Legacy. <laughs> but I really, uh, I feel like, I, to say I don't know, but I, I, I feel like the, the, the poem that Legacy Legacy comes from, it's by Margaret Burroughs. And to me, she, it's like a, a call to action that she's saying, like, look at all these people who have come before you. Like, what will your legacy be? Legacy Legacy. And to me, I'm, I'm in that stage where I've just done the like Sankofa, like I've, I, I wanted to look back and see like what has made, brought me to the ideas and like thoughts that I have in this moment. 
and in order for me to f more fully authentically be myself. And I think that maybe that's part, that's gonna be part of my legacy is just figuring out how I can most authentically be myself and sh unlearning and shedding anything that's taught me otherwise. That's dope. And we're about to get into the album. This is my last question. Um, what do you want people to take away from Legacy Legacy when they hear it tonight? Um, I just, okay, this is good because, yeah, it doesn't have to feel like you have to sit quiet and listen. Like, if you hear something, like, you can turn to your neighbor and be like, did you hear that? You neighbor? Know, like, you don't have to be quiet. Um, you can still go get a drink. Um, and can we just shout out um, the Parkway Ballroom really quick for letting us be here? Um, so yeah, I was just say like, listen, but don't feel confined. Listen in the way that feels most authentic to you. And I'm really excited for everyone to hear it. Thank you so much for being here. Well, let's clap it up for Jamila. Thank you so, so much. I hope that this turns into a party while we're listening. So thank you again to the Chicago Reader for this opportunity.